models inside and then they came out with the little headsets on and started talking and i was like that's what i want to do okay. i didn't know how to get there but i said that's what i want to do um and then fast forward i was working at a company and they had positions open for trainers so i was like well you know let me just go and apply and they were backed up with the auditions and the guy goes, just drop your tape off. We'll look at it and we'll give you a call. And, right. you know, I knew what that meant. And there was nobody else in the room that looked like me. Mm -hmm. And then one other guy came in, looked like me, and we kind of looked at each other, you know, and then it was the type, then it was the time where, okay, well, they're only gonna hire one of us. So <laughs> you're saying I'm going to work. So congratulations, the job is yours. But, um, I guess maybe a week or two later, they called me and they're like, we watched your tape, we want you to come in. And that's how my career got started in education. And that became the passion of my life. And how I said, um, I looked at what stylists were making and I said to myself, there's no way people can support yourself off of that. Like we need to do stuff because if you go to other countries like in Europe, we're looked at like doctors and lawyers, you know, we're put on a pedestal, but then you come here and everyone's like, oh, well, you know, how much is if I just curl the front, if I just, you know, do the back? And I was blown away by that. So that became my mission in life is really to help stylists live a better life. Um, and as I started moving up in the ranks and got closer to the table, um, my goal became, you know, to help black stylists. I would see, I feel like if you're in the position to help, then it's your responsibility to help. Not saying that you can get everybody in, not saying mm -hmm. that you can change everything, but you at least have to try. And if you don't, then shame on you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> all of that is so powerful, you know, as far as your journey, as far as even thinking, you know, it's like, I won't get in because no one looks like me. It's like, I won't get in because there's another person that does look like me. And we, you know, kind of the unspoken rule is, you know, the only one. One. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Um, and for you young people out there that don't understand what that means, back in the day, pretty much companies had to check the box. And as long as the box was checked with like one or two, they were good, you know? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the word is token, I think. So, <laughs> and for what I hear, yes. people don't like to hear that or, or uh <laughs> Yes, no, no. Yeah, but it, it's been a real part of our history. So um exactly. Thank you for breaking it down for the, the young <laughs> yes. um, yeah. Oh sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say so that that's really where I got my start, um, was doing just in salon education and kept moving up, moving up. And then I remember I was at the same company, there became a position open for a national educator that was really gonna work with all the different salons. Um, and I was like, oh, that sounds powerful. That sounds like, you know, what I need. So got that and really found out it was really just a glorified, you're gonna be on the road 30 mm. days out of the month. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't mind it. Most of my career I have spent traveling in one form or the other. And it made me realize that A, I love travel. B, I got to touch more people than I could just being in one spot. Um, and also got to see the world and see what beauty is, not just here, but mm. in other places. Um, and that's, you know, one thing that I really love. Um, then from there, I guess my first corporate job was uh, with Ulta Beauty, mm -hmm. where we met. Um, <clears throat> I was so excited for that opportunity. I thought I was going to be able to work from home. So I was like, oh, I can stay in Baltimore. It'll be great. Found out I had to move to Chicago. Wasn't excited about that at all, um, but got there and loved it. Uh, it was a great job, great company, met some great people. And that's where I really learned a lot about business. Um, and for you young stylists out there, or not even some of your older stylists out there, 
like learn about the business aspect of it because you don't know what you don't know but then once you find out you realize all the mistakes that you've made along the way and you also realize when people are trying to take advantage of you in business so you know really just take some business courses marketing especially that's like helped me tremendously in my career and just doing those things on the side it led to me getting to l'oreal so prior to that i was a redken artist for a while um and then when i came to l'oreal i was on the mcb division which is like carol's daughter dark and lovely you know all of the ethnic brands um phenomenal brands great time i got to work with lisa price you know the founder of carol's daughter she's amazing erica bowen there is amazing she was the gm um and got to do like a lot of the things that you'll see like on my social media a lot of those things i got to do with that brand because we kind of had the autonomy to do what we needed to do and that's something that i love i love taking on a project and really making it my own um I was there for eight years, and then L'Oreal Professional came a calling, and I was like, "Okay, you know." And once again, you know, I was like, "I'm gonna be a black exec at a predominantly Caucasian brand. How is that gonna work? How is that gonna look? How do I feel about that?" Mm -hmm. um, but speaking to the GM there, she was super passionate about wanting to see diversity and wanting to change the narrative that it's not a brand for everybody, that it's only for a specific type of person. Mm -hmm. So that really made me feel comfortable enough to accept the position, have a great team there. And I feel like we're leading the charge in making, making it visible and not just checking boxes. Like we're really going internally and just making it all around. And luckily there's enough of us there and the people above us really listen to what we have to say and want to work with us. So, you know, extremely happy, extremely happy. Yeah, well, that that's wonderful and powerful to hear as well. That you know, even before all of this, you know, erupted, yes. there's a commitment there. Yes, to having yeah. inclusion, um, which I think is, you know, the words, the buzzwords are inclusion and diversity, and yes. we're we've seen like very little of true inclusion and very little of true diversity with a lot of companies. Right, because unfortunately a lot of companies believe that in order for it to look like we're making a difference you get a model that looks like lapita and you know give her some blonde hair and put her on a box or put her on a billboard and that's fine you know everyone's happy and what they have to realize that it takes more than that it takes yes that's important having the models and having the imagery but then also you need people on the other side that are creating the imagery that are doing the hair because we've all been on shoots and you know and ralph talked about it as well you've been on shoots and you get there and you have all of these beautiful black models and the hairdressers don't understand how to do our hair mm -hmm which to me was always a cop-out because we do all types of hair. So why doesn't everybody do all types of hair? Right. Um, and it's good to see now that some of that is starting to change. And then hopefully we will see more of that in the very near future. Yeah. So all around with a bunch of different companies. Yeah. Like I know L'Oreal is, you know, such a powerful force in the industry. Are there things I don't know, not sure if you're aware of or anything, but things that that they may be helping to influence in terms of, you know, I think it's with um, with schools, of course, but then the schools have to count on the textbooks, you know, which I think Milady does a good job, but there's definitely a lot of room for improvement. Yes. Um, and then, 
you know, from what I, I had another conversation and it was like really the books and the schools are following the curriculum that's set by the state and state board who completely don't understand what we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so uh, with L'Oreal, um, some of the brands have partner schools that we really work with on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And obviously, yes, they have to teach the Milady curriculum, but then also we will send in artists or we'll have specialty classes or trainings. And then our, we launched this year Access, which is an online learning platform, totally free for any stylist. Wow. Just go on and sign up, www.lorealaccess.com little plug there yeah <laughs> spell it for us and make sure we've got access spelled right um so it's l'oreal l-o-r-e-a-l and then a c c e s s dot com um quick and easy sign up you can view it on your mobile phone you can view it on your desktop and you can pull up all types of education from all of the professional brands and then you also can see webinars when we're having webinars or we're having live trainings they can um click from there and it'll take you like directly to the training so you can really see what's going on and it's continuously updated so we're, we're treating it like social media so mm -hmm. as you come back we'll have more and more things on there and I know speaking specifically, mm, specifically for our brand, um, we're going to have a lot of modules on there that deal with all types of hair, that deal with curl in general. Mm -hmm. Because most people say, oh, I don't know how to do black hair, which they really mean, I don't know how to work with curly hair. Because mm -hmm. as that hair gets curlier, we know there's certain challenges that come with it. So we want to teach everybody how to work with all textures of hair. So then no one has the excuse to say, oh, well, I don't do that type of hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I want to, you know, kind of dig in a little bit deeper because sometimes it's the curly hair, but I've been in experience, been in situations where the person hasn't even gotten close enough to see the hair and they're already decided that they can't do it. Great time. <laughs> yeah, it's like, because it's attached to a black person yes. that it's like, oh, well, I can't do their hair when it may be the same texture as someone who may be Jewish or maybe, exactly. you know, another ethnicity that has curly hair or has wavy hair exactly. or what have you. Yeah, well. Great, great hair sometimes. <laughs> I can't say what I want to say on that one because we're on live. And <laughs> but I, I, yes, I agree with you. Um, and I think those people that have that phobia just really need to take a step back and ask themselves, is it really the hair that you're afraid of mm -hmm. or is it something else that you're afraid of? Mm -hmm. right. right. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's so much, so many layers to the puzzle, but I yes. absolutely appreciate that you guys are offering all this education and that it's so broad in terms of what, you know, people have access to. And then, you know, that word is great access. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> then it's free, which is like, what? <laughs> so. free. And, you know, uh, and maybe not everybody knows, but I mean, we have the pinnacle of you know, African-American brands there. We have Mazzani, which, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, when I was in the salon, I was running to the Mazzani <laughs> relaxer for everything. Um, and so they have a ton of stuff on there and yeah. they're really helping leading the charge, you know, within, um, within our building just on educating everybody and getting everybody up to speed. And the thing that I love is everybody's getting involved, even the marketing team, is taking classes and asking questions so okay yeah and i think that it has to change not just from like a like you say like a show level you mm -hmm. know where it's like oh we have some classes but nobody really understands what's being taught on the classes so if people right. have questions or if they're you know sales reps that are in the field that are talking to people and you know other people in the chain don't really understand what it is it's just like a post on the on the site yeah. it's not really education exactly and it goes back to really beauty school is where it all starts because i just remember what i learned 
in beauty school, I could have sat outside on the porch and got double of that from the girls in the neighborhood. Okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Which is where I learned how to braid. Okay. <laughs> you know? um, so I definitely, it starts there. We have to get them when they're in school and really train everybody then and, and change the curriculum and make it more than just not one module or you know a week. Sometimes some people didn't even get a week. I remember some people, you know, got like two days worth of training, and the teacher said, "Oh well, you're never gonna use this anyway." Wow. Yeah. You know. And that happens in in regular school. I remember um, my sister came home one day and said, you know, she didn't have to do the Roman numeral. She didn't have to learn that part because the teacher said she didn't have to. And of course, you know, my mother stomped back up to the school. <laughs> What do you mean she's not learning this, you know? I bet you she still knows all the Roman numerals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. when mom gets involved, that changes everything. <laughs> that changes everything. Yes, absolutely. So um, <laughs> I actually want to pause this for a second because yes. I'm, I'm telling you guys, it's like this is my first go around with this, my first little rodeo. Um, live stream and I didn't hit the button to go live for a little while. I was like, is this recording? How can I tell if it's recording? And <laughs> so I'm hoping that our the first part of our conversation was actually recorded, even though our live stream started a little bit late. So I appreciate everybody that's here. And I have figured out seeing the comments that are coming in. And um, so I'm going to show one, I think. Okay. Yay. Uh, thank you. I'm glad to be here too. Yeah. Yes. So hello to everyone. Welcome. Sorry for the delay with getting on. Oh, okay. I want to show this as well. Um, and she said the doctor doesn't go to college to learn just one thing. They learn everything and then they specialize in one field. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Thank you for that, Anna. Yeah. That's, definitely the way I think that our our schools and curriculum and all of that should be. But um, and I feel like we have to really push and make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, and not just push during times when there's a national tragedy, it needs to be on everybody's radar every day. Um, you know, just because the black box on your Instagram isn't there anymore. It doesn't mean that everything is great. And, you know, right. we fixed everything in the 30 days. Now <laughs> it's an ongoing process and you just have to be mindful of it. And I tell everybody, if you don't know, ask the question. Mm -hmm. If you're asking a serious question and you're really looking for a genuine answer, I feel like most people are going to give it to you. Just don't ask the question, like we said, once again, to check the box or doing it in a, a demeaning way. Then I feel like that's where the conversation turns into something else. And we don't want it to be that. We want to have an open conversation because we, we want change. We want to see more people of color in higher positions. We want to see more people of color on set and backstage at Fashion Week and, you know, like, and there's nobody that tells us how to go about it. I mean, you just kind of figure it out. Everyone's like, oh, well, how did you get to where you are? And I was like, well, made a lot of bad mistakes. And they're like, oh, and what else? I'm like, no, that's it. Made a lot of bad mistakes, <laughs> you know, and you figure it out along the way. Um, I remember my first photo shoot ever. Um, I got there and it was at the pier in New York and I walked in and as I was walking in, the person that I was supposed to be assisting um, was, for lack of a better word, being asked to leave. Mm. And they look at me and they go, well, who are you? And I was like, well, I was his assistant. And they're like, well, he's no longer working. So I guess that means you're doing hair. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I remember I spent so much time. I did the model's hair and showed it to them. And they looked at me. They looked at the hair. And they looked back at me. And she goes, 
Okay. So you have 20 minutes to fix whatever that is. <laughs> Or you can go with your friend. And I remember I went outside. Oh, that's horrible. It was, but I went outside. I sat on the curb. I called my brother and I cried. And then I got it all out of my system. And he was like, all right, now get back in there. Do what you know how to do. You know how to do hair. Go in there and show them what you can right. do. Don't worry about that it's on film or that anything. Just do it. And that was kind of my start. Like I did it. She never said a word if she liked it or not. But then <laughs> the next shoot, she called me back, and so I was like, "Okay, well, you know, I guess, I guess she liked it." <laughs> so sometimes you just have to fail, and if you fail, don't worry about it. You pick yourself up, you dust yourself off, mm -hmm. do it again. You know, by now there's nothing anybody can say to you that you probably have not heard before. And even if you do, most of these people, you're never going to see again in your life. So what difference does it make? You know, you just have to do you and you, you'll make it. You'll make it. You know? yeah. That's a hard lesson to learn, though, the, the doing you kind of thing, because, yeah, <laughs> it is. It's hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. I always say in order and this is just for life in general, you have to treat yourself as a corporation. And every corporation has a board of directors. So you have your closest friends, your spouses, mm -hmm. people in your family. Those are your board of directors. And you have regular meetings and you lay it all out on the table. You get everybody's feedback. The decision should ultimately always be yours, but you take everything that everyone said and you weigh the options and that's gonna usually point you in the right direction because usually your family and your close friends aren't gonna steer you wrong. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, and I, I do think, you know, being selective with that because not everyone is as blessed as, you know, I think both you and I are to have some of that support system. True. So don't be afraid to be selective as far as who your yes. board of directors. Yes, is. because you want your board to tell you the truth, not tell you what you wanna hear. That's right. the key right. difference, you know? Because um, especially in this industry, once you start making a name for yourself, you will have plenty of people that just want to give you accolades and tell you how great you are mm -hmm. and all of that. And that's nice, but those aren't the ones that are going to get you to the next level. The ones mm -hmm. that are going to get you to the next level are the ones that say, I don't know what you just did, but you got 20 minutes to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Those are the ones that's, that I mean that's people. literal trial by fire. It's like it's a trial by fire, yeah. Comes right in and <laughs> you know, and the funny thing is, uh the woman that said that to me, her and I are still friends, like we'll see each other at shows, and as soon as we see each other, we'll just start laughing <laughs> our minds go back to that day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely what you call brutal honesty. But on, on things like sets and um, photo shoots, um, beh anything behind the scenes is like time is like a critical, critical factor. So they don't have time to to be cute and be nice. You know, yes. it's, you know, come in, do your job, get it done. So any suggestions for stylists to, you know, aspire to do Fashion Week or... Yes. Um so the first thing I would say on Fashion Week, if you're aspiring to do Fashion Week, it looks great on your resume. You will have a ball, but just understand that it's free. You're not getting paid mm -hmm. to do the hair. Only person that's getting paid is whoever the lead is. Sometimes the lead will share and give you some of that, but 90% of the time you're doing it for free. But once again, great exposure. You get to go to New York or Paris, Milan, wherever. So. That's one thing. Um, and be in areas where fashion is happening because you need to be able to go at the drop of a dime. Sometimes you just need to crash the party and just be like, hey, you know, I'm here. What can I do? No matter how much experience you have, always be humble enough to assist or to hold somebody's bobby pins. You know, there's been plenty of artists where I've gone and I just stood there and passed them bobby pins, but it was okay because 
one, you're in the room, it gets you seen. And then when they cast for the next show, they're like, oh, that guy was great. He held pins better than anybody ever did. <laughs> we won him back. <laughs> and you'll get the opportunity eventually to put your hands in hair. When you start putting your hands in hair, always do exactly what they ask for. Don't put your spin on it. They spend months perfecting this look that they want to come down the runway. It's not up to you to change it. And this is a saying, I know everybody says it, but it's so true. Stay in your lane. If you're there to do hair, you do hair. Do it exactly as you saw it. You know, be helpful, help other people out. Um, you know, it always helps to make friends, but genuinely with designers or people that are doing the book in. If you're going to get a soda, ask them, do they want something? Because that helps them remember who you are within a sea of people. Um, also be available. Uh, and things probably have changed now, but I know probably in my day, uh, like when I was doing platform work, it was one of those things like, we'll call you once. You, you have the option to say no, but if you say no, there might not be a second call. Um, I don't right. think it's that critical anymore, but try to be open as possible because you need to work around their schedule. They're not trying to work around your schedule. Um, those are some of the biggest things I would say. Always have your kit ready, have your kit packed. If you work in the salon, have a separate kit with all of your tools, um, extra hair, a ton of bobby pins, wraps, things like that that you're going to need on set. Um, full can of hairspray, all of that, just keep packed by the door. So that way when you get that call, you don't have to think about what you need to bring. You just pick up your kit. Stylists always say, well, what do I need in my kit? I say everything. <laughs> because you never know when you get on set what they're going to ask you to do or what you might end up doing. Case in point. So um, when I left Carol's daughter, um, I worked like right up to the end. So I had to go to Paris for my new job. So I left Carol's daughter at 1 p.m. By 5, I was on a flight to Paris, got there, walked in, and they were like, oh, well, we need help on you know this that we're doing. And I was like, OK, so I'm thinking I'm going back there. I'm just going to pass bobby pins or, at best, mix up color because you know I'm brand new. And I was doing models. OK. <laughs> you know what I mean? Had I just you know, came in. And so those one of those times they were like, hey, can you braid? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, good. We need all of these, <laughs> all those weave over there on the table. We need in all of those models over there. And I'm like, hey, sure. You know, so you just have to pick up, you just have to do it and you have to be ready at the drop of a hat. Um, yeah, and it'll come. Also, now you have social media, which makes it so much easier Stalk your favorite hairdresser that you see that are doing things that you like to do. Ask them, can you come and assist? Or ask them, you know, can I just come and do whatever, even if I just stand there and hold your coffee? Because watch everything that they do, and that will show you what you need to do. Take stock, have the honest conversation with yourself. And a lot of us don't like to have honest conversations with ourselves but have that honest conversation about the things that you're not good at. And all of those things that you're not good at are the things that you need to start doing all the time so you can get good at them. Um, because you never know what's gonna walk on that you're gonna have to do, or you never know who's gonna call and you're gonna you know, have to do a show or you're gonna have to do um, a music video. You know, you never know. Some of my big breaks have come totally by accident mm -hmm. um years ago um and if you remember the group danity kane so it was after hurricane katrina mm -hmm. salon was closing one night and a lady comes in and she goes um you know i, I lost everything in katrina mm -hmm. are you having any specials you know for 
survivors of it. And I was like, well, and I looked at my watch, looked at the time, I looked at my book. I didn't have anybody else on my book. So I was like, come on back. She just wanted a relaxer. And I think we like gave her a little wrap and, you know, a couple curls in the top. Took me two hours at most. When she was leaving, she said, can I have your card? And I was like, sure. And she goes, actually give me two. And I was like, okay. She goes, yeah, my daughter is on this reality show now. I can't say anything about it, but she won and she's looking for someone to do her hair. And I was like, okay. You know, I didn't really right. pay much about it or anything. And then it was, I'd say maybe three or four months later, come to find out it was, remember when Diddy had Making the Band and oh. then it was uh, one of the girls that was in Dan Eddie Kane and she came to me and got color, got extensions. And at the salon that I was at that time, that really boosted our salon business mm -hmm. because she was up and coming. You know, I was in the first chair by the window. She was sitting in my chair and all of these girls just stood there and started screaming and looking in the window. And, you know, she was like, well, what are they screaming at? I'm like, you, like, you're a celebrity now. Just get used to it, you know? So things like that. So from that, I was on MTV with her when they had a segment. Um, and just, yeah. So it was just one of those unplanned things that turned into something amazing in the long run so you just never know definitely you never know never know <laughs> yeah you said a couple things that I, you know it's like i used to tell my my team my styling team um at the salon you know it's like always put yourself in that number two position because yes. it's like if anything happens to number one it's like you're already you know already ready yes. people don't want to humble themselves to be in that that spot exactly. that's, the, that's the spot See, that's the spot <laughs> That's the sweet spot, yes. Never be too humble to do anything. Uh -huh. You know, get in there, get your hands dirty. You know, and I say that at work all the time. I'm like, I would never ask my team to do something that I haven't done or that I'm not willing to do myself. And there's lots of times where you find yourself sitting there doing a job and you're like, wait a minute, why am I doing this? <laughs> you know? But it also teaches you how you should treat people because we've all worked for those people that were like, oh, well, I've done this. And every time they open their mouth, they're just spewing their resume to you. And it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, someone gave you that position and that chance. So you should use your platform to give someone else a position and give someone else a chance. Right. You know, yeah. Definitely about giving back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, wow. It's like you said so much. There are so many things I want to ask, but okay. um, <laughs> <laughs> so you segued into MTV and told us how you were on there. How were you on Comedy Central? It's like you don't think about hairstylists being on Comedy Central. <laughs> so, yes. So I personally wasn't on Comedy Central. My work was, though. I okay. had one of my clients. She was up and coming comedian at the time this was years ago and she called me and was like i need my hair done i've got this big gig and i was like okay yeah come on in so i'm doing her hair and then she's telling me it's for comedy central and i'm like oh my god so we have to make sure you give them that extra love and care um yeah i mean your clients will probably get you most of the things that you need because a lot of them are doing big things and then in turn pull you in and you just never know, you know, where it goes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And that, that was fun just to see your work. I think that was probably like one of the first times that I got to see my work like mm -hmm. on TV. And uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I couldn't even tell you what she said. Cause the whole time I'm like staring, <laughs> staring at her hair. <laughs> yep, looks good when she turns that way. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well that's exactly. definitely a wow moment. It's like seeing your, your work on TV. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you talked about traveling and loving yes. traveling and going to um, cities, of course, and other countries and being able to see beauty in different ways because mm -hmm. of that. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, like differences you, you told us, you know, as far as how much more respect, you know, hairstylists have yes. in, I guess, European countries? Yes. Yeah, so, yes, definitely in Europe, hairstylists are, are viewed very different than they're viewed here. Like I said, we're on the statue of lawyers and mm -hmm. um, doctors and things like that. They really look at hair as an art and they really work to perfect that art. Not to say that we don't hear, it's just different. Um, and you really get to see like we, you only know what you see around you. And when you go to other countries, you see hair. And even if it's not your taste, it just gives you a new appreciation for the things that they do and the way that they wear it. And you take all of that and then you bring it back and put it into your work. So then your work just really expands and it's not regional, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I say regional just because, you know, there's certain areas of the country where a certain style is on and popping and you know you do that and that's what you're known for but then you go to another city and do that and they're like <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? right right so it's really how to take that and make it universal because mm -hmm. you can pick up bits and pieces from everywhere put it together and maybe it's creating your own style maybe you're doing a photo shoot or you're in a photo competition and you do that and it sets you apart from everybody else because you're not doing the same thing that you're always doing. Um, that was always key for me. Another big thing that uh, an artist told me a long time ago was have a signature piece to your work. It can be whatever you want it to be, but it should be something that when they see that, they know, oh, Mickey did that, or oh, Jose did that. Um, and if my sister's on here, she's probably gonna kill me for saying this, but my thing was, I liked hair coming down over one eye. <laughs> and I just remember the first time she let me do her hair and I gave her that hair over the one eye and she kept trying to do with it. And my dad was like, you're gonna go blind. You can't see it out one side. I'm like, yeah, but she looks cute. <laughs> But Nothing like dads, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, just have like your signature piece. And it doesn't have to be something like really bold. It could be something really subtle. Like, you know, you always leave just a longer piece here for a little sideburn. Something that mm -hmm. it speaks to you. Right. Um, and then traveling. Uh, yeah, I... For a while, my job, I was on a plane probably three times a month. Um, You're breaking up just a little bit. I don't know if oh, there's any. Can you hear me? Are we good? It keeps kind of freezing for a little bit. Mm. Hold up. Let me see. Go ahead, because now it's not freezing. Well, yes, okay. it is. Okay. <laughs> Hold up. Let me see. Be right back. Okay. <laughs> So we'll um, we'll keep waiting because we want to hear what's co coming next. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is that better? Yes, it is. Okay, okay. perfect. Yes. Um, yeah. So no, I would I would get on a plane like three, sometimes four times a month, um, and what it started off was was going to other salons, training trainers. Then as I started moving up and working, or excuse me, training stylists, and then as I started moving up, it was more train the trainer. Um, and I really like working with other trainers, I think even more so because to see that light come on within them and then they go out and teach really like brought me joy. That kind of was like my own personal joy. Um, and you get to go some places that you never expected to go and even like. I remember <laughs> we, we had an event and what was it? It was in Tennessee. And, you know, when they said that, I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? 
And then when we got there, they're like, oh, tomorrow we're going to take you guys to Dolly World. And I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, not- I, I just didn't know what to expect, you know? I just didn't know what to expect. And I must say, had like the best time of my life. It was just great scene, great environment, great people all the way around. So the reason I say that is, you know, obviously we all want to go to the hot spots, but sometimes when you go to the other places, you get a new appreciation for it and you see things in a different light. And especially when you go and you're giving them knowledge and you're helping people feed their family, they're going to remember you. And that is going to make change because regardless of what they thought when you walked in, they're going to have a different opinion of you when you walk out. And especially a month later when they implemented the things that you taught them and now they can feed their family or they can buy their house or they got a new car. Like the the high that I would get when people would come to me or they would write me and say, you know what? I went back. I did just what she said. And I made an X amount of dollars this week, or now I did this and I've saved up and I paid off all of my bills. Like that, that brings me that inner joy. And that makes me feel like, I can only imagine how like Beyonce feels when she's on stage because you want to see people do better. And this is a career that I fell in love with. I want to make everyone else fall in love with it. But at the end of the day, if you can do something that you love and still take care of your family, you know, that's amazing because a lot of people have a job. They don't have a career. You know? Right. Yeah. And luckily for the last, God, I even hate to say this, 30 some years, <laughs> you know, I've had a career and it's never felt like a job. And most days I can honestly say I do the things that I would do for free. Mm-hmm. And I'm just lucky enough to get paid to do it. Yeah, that's a wonderful place to be. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah, ah. it seems like, I mean, from the outside looking in, it seems like, okay, you get to travel, you do television. It's like you, you know, are <laughs> educating other stylists. It, it does sound like a dream job. So. Well, but this what are is some of the so challenges. The downside, okay, so yeah. the challenges are, when you see that five minute clip on TV of TV, what you don't realize where the weeks or months behind the scene, the 12 and 14 hour days of getting things prepared to that five minute clip looks seamless. When you see an artist on stage and you go, oh, that's the life I want. It's so elegant because you know the lights and the smoke and all the models. And you know this, what you don't see is that 3 a.m. you're getting out out of bed where you just got to bed at 1 a.m. Right. for model prep and you're going to be on stage until 6 p.m. doing hair all day, no lunch, no breaks, maybe some right. water if you're not, if you're lucky and you're nice. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, they don't see all of that they don't understand that you've got to pay your dues. You have to do that grunt work in order to stand on stage and look like, oh, this is so effortless. And also what you really don't see a lot of times is when I'm standing there doing hair and it's looking effortless, I have a team of 30 people in the back that (laughs) are making me look that good on stage. You know, it's, it's never, just you, it's always a team effort. So those people that you just, I can't be nice to them, Uh I don't like them. Mase, if you can hear me, we have lost you on this Uh, end. There you are. Oh yeah, I don't know what it is because you're clear on my side. Okay, and Michelle is saying it's clear on YouTube. So hopefully it's just me somehow, but you're, the screen went completely <laughs> blank on my end. Ooh. So you were saying there's, there's 30 people behind you, behind the scenes that oh, are- Oh yeah, there's 30 people behind the scenes <laughs> that are pushing you up, propping you up, fixing all of the things that you're doing. Um, you know, it's funny, we, we always talk about like, 
you have that hair that you do on stage that you want everyone to come up and play in and look at and ask you what you did. Then you also have that hair that looks great on stage, but I need you at least eight feet away from me because if you get closer, you're gonna see the pins and the tracks that come out. You know, it's always the tricks of the trade to make it look good for the for the time being. Mm -hmm. um, another thing, you know, that we always try to do when we do any type of shows or classes is really give the model a realistic expectation of what her hair is going to look like. Um, I have been to shows where women have had hair to the middle of their back and walked away with the little short pixie cut. And that's not what they agreed to. I've seen mm -hmm. models cry on stage. Um, mm -hmm. And once again, how I said, you know, watch people to see what you should do. Also watch people to see what you shouldn't do. You know, mm -hmm. I always try to have an end look of the, the hair that I want to do. And when we're doing model call, I'll just walk around and show them the hair and like, okay, if you're up for this, raise your hand, come over here, let's talk about it. Because that way, the model is going to go on social media and talk about you and say how well it did and how she liked you. And also it's going to make her feel good and you're going to have a good rapport. So the next time you're in town, you can call her and she'll come and she'll bring all of her friends um, to help you out. I mean, I always try to continuously work with people that have done well for me in the past. And one time, it was last minute we were doing a shoot in Miami and this was literally the night before I needed a model. Uh, and I called a girlfriend of mine and I was like, Hey, I know we haven't talked in years, but I'm in Miami. Any chance you still live here and need your hair done? She was like, no, I don't live there anymore, but hold on. I'll call you right back. And within 30 minutes had four to five girls sending me pictures that wanted to model. So it's, it's really building that rapport with, people in the industry right right like us yeah. I mean, well we're we're going on 30 some years together in one four I know. <laughs> <You're dating me>. <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> you were 10 when i came to your class i know right <laughs> <laughs> i was teaching at a really 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 early age so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you were advanced <laughs> Yeah, for for anyone who missed the beginning because it wasn't being broadcast, um, as they shared when we first met, and you know, and how we were kind of reunited. But it's like yeah. he attended a cutting class I was doing, and yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I feel like we always run into each other somewhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I'm at a show somewhere. Yeah, we always see each other. Yeah, and you were talking about the. Um, you know, the effort and everything, the work that goes into working behind the scenes. And and that was really how Beauty Superstars was born because it's like I, you know, as you know, some people do and some people don't. It's like I used uh -huh. to do a lot of platform work and a lot of educating for on the hair side. And, um, you know, people would always come up and it's like, oh my gosh, I want to do what you do. And, you know, it's like, do you really? You know, it's like everybody wants to be a superstar until there's like, Oh, okay. You work all, yeah. you jump on a plane, you, you know, go yeah. straight to a call, no food. You know, it's like you're there late, then you're up early, then you're, you know, on stage. And then, you know, it's just. <laughs> I always say it's all fun and games until you get that call sheet. And, you know, when, you, look, when you get that call sheet and you look okay. and it's like artists and it's like 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. Yeah. and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And my one of my early trainers um told us it's like everybody look good on day one, like of a three day show. It's like yeah. who are you gonna be on day three? Will you yeah. be showing up? Will you be late? Will you be tired? Will you be dragging? It's like you gotta bring oh, yeah. the same thing. Exactly. Every single oh. day. And that's a good point that we did mention. Be on time. Be on time. Mm -hmm. I, you can be late in your personal life all you want, but for an event, for a show, or for a job interview, be no, don't even be on time. Be early to make sure that you're on time. You know, like somebody said before, if you're on time, then you're late. You know, mm -hmm. 
creative. I've had, I've had, and don't get me like, I get it. We're a creative bunch. You know, we're <laughs> definitely as a left brain. Um, <laughs> we're creative, but that doesn't fly with everything. When you come into a business setting, your excuse for being late can be, oh, well, I'm creative. You know, I work and everybody <laughs> in my department at work is a hairdresser. Mm-hmm. So you can't use that excuse to come in and say, oh, well, you know, you know how us creatives are. Yeah, we do, <laughs> but we're all here. You should be here too. And right. especially if you're trying to get your foot in the door, you want to put your best foot forward and you want to show them what you're going to bring to the table. And starting off late isn't the best way to show up. Now, obviously, if something really happened, those are the one-offs. But you know, you know who I'm speaking to, you out there that end up late for everything. And that's a lesson that a hard lesson that I had to learn because I used to be one of those people, you know, when I was in the salon, I was like, oh, you know, I'm in the salon, my book is always full. I can- I can just show up whenever I want to show up. And looking back, I was like, ooh, I was a horrible person. (laughs) (laughs) I would have fired me. You know, looking now, like, I would have fired me. So you don't want to be that person. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The timing is, like I was saying, like with anything that's a shoot or backstage or what have you, it's like they're not going to wait for you. So it's like you've got to have, you've got to be on time. You've got to have all your stuff that you need. Not you know like oh I need to run out to Sally's or something. You know. No. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you run to Sally's beforehand. Um, right. You know, and talking about having a seat at the table. Once you get the seat at the table, use your voice. You're there because they want and value your opinion. And if you speak your opinion, and people are unhappy with it then maybe you're just not at the right table. You know, mm-hmm. you need to be somewhere where, and obviously there's always back and forth. There's always, no one is ever going to like every single idea you bring to the table, but don't get in there and then just sit there and close mouth and just go along with what everybody's doing. We change through disruption. We learn through disruption. So sometimes you need to get in there and disrupt things in order to get the results that you're looking for or to get them to see things from a new perspective. Um, Because sometimes, well, people don't know what they don't know. And when you give it to them from a different point of view, then they can step out of themselves and see it and go, oh, yeah, you're right. You know, so definitely use your voice. Yeah. So what are some things that you can can say to you know, hairstylists who may be saying it's like maybe, you know, especially with COVID, people are looking at options and making changes. It's like if they're mm-hmm. considering pursuing something in a corporate type environment, what would you say to kind of get started? Or, you know, what are you, you know, hindsight if you wish you knew something before? <laughs> so I would say learn social media and I mean, the ins and outs, the SEOs, all of those type of things about the back end or the inner workings of social media, because especially since COVID, we have gone to a digital world and some industries that didn't think they could survive digitally are thriving digitally. Um, Stylists are the most resilient people I know when COVID started. I was worried because obviously, like many people, I just thought, well, if they can't do hair, what's going to happen? People were just going to be out there. But we started hearing these stories like people were setting up online shops and selling product. Um, Mm -hmm. Some shops were doing, they would mix your color, two separate containers, give it to you on the curb, go home, you'd make an appointment on FaceTime and mix it, and they would walk you through the process. I mean, so much ingenuity. So learn your social media, all those little things that you say, if you're, you know, of the generation that doesn't like social media or just like, I can't be bothered with this. Even if you don't want to be bothered with it, learn about it because it's going to come in handy. Um, Other thing I would say is 
go on LinkedIn, take some marketing courses, um, some business, some finance courses. And even if you're saying, oh, well, I want to be a platform artist, you'll still need to know how to handle your money and you need to know how to market yourself. And think of you are your brand. So you have a company now, you have, you're your brand. After this, you look at who you have around you, you put together your board of directors, and then you go, okay, so I need to be at the top. How are we gonna get us there? <laughs> um, so take some classes, you said marketing, business, finance. Um, also take some art classes. What we do is art, but look at other artists that use different mediums and see how they work, translate that back into hair. Um, one of the best classes that I ever went to long time ago, and it was about, you know, creating and find your creative side. And the first half of the class, we walked around a park and we walked around outside and we just look and took pictures of different things that spoke to us. And I was like, I don't get this. <laughs> Laid out the pictures and they're like, oh, what do you like about this? Oh, I like the textures of the rock. Okay, so now go and how do you make that into a color technique? Or I like the shape of the petals of the flowers. Okay, well now go do a haircut that resembles that. You know, and you don't do it literally and go and cut a flower in somebody's hair. But, you know, well, I mean, you can. But, um, you know, take those type of things and step outside of yourself and really look at hair and look at art from a different point of view. It will definitely help you in the long run. My job now, only reason I am here in this role now is because at some of the other brands, we were like, well, we need to do this shoot or we need to create this video. And, you know, I always was kind of techie. So I was like, oh, I'll do it, you know, and started doing that. And then it came to, okay, well, Mize is gonna shoot this and then we're gonna do this or, you know, working with the social media team because you can help them create what they need for the brand while they teach you the things about social media. So learn from each other. But because of all those things I just did because I like to do it, when it came to this job, looking at the job description, I was like, oh, I know how to do all of that. I mean, I wasn't trained. I trained myself, but you know, you just never know where the opportunity is going to come from. Um, so yeah, those are things I would suggest and stalk people on social media. Find somebody that's doing the things that you want to do and ask them questions. Ask them, can you come and work with them or assist them? Mm -hmm. Even if it's not paid, sometimes you have to pay your dues. Doesn't matter what you're doing in the salon, you're trying to get to the next level. It's like you're starting over. Um, but yeah, do that. Go follow your favorite companies, the companies that you like using their products see when they're holding auditions for educators. Um, if they're not, call them and see what you can do. I, I haven't seen that you're doing any shows, you're not doing any social media, I can help you by doing X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the things, you make them need you, you make them want you, and you give them a service that they're not currently getting. You know? those, those would be my, my tips. <laughs> Well, I'm hoping that everybody was really taking some good notes on all of those tips because those were some serious tips, you know, really digging into art from all of the perspectives of art yeah. is, is, you know, beyond. I mean, it just takes you to another level, even if you're in the salon, um, the social media aspect, marketing classes. It's like there's so much that's that we need to know to really become like more well-rounded and yeah. I can say valuable to um, to others. Just think about it. When you a CEO knows everything about his business, he might not know how to work everything or do every little piece of the business, but he has a, a knowledgeable understanding of it all. That's mm -hmm. what you need to do for your business and your brand is get that experience. And if you there's something that 
you can't find how to do or you really don't understand, then you have a job opening on your board and you need to hire a new board member that specializes in that to help you out. You don't have to know everything. You just need to know how to find it. Yeah, and I, I love the concept of the board members. It's like, I think that's uh, really powerful. Yes. And sometimes I, I think in this industry, especially like with the, you know, with suites taking off the way that they have, that we have this sense of like, well, I can do it myself and I can, you know, figure it out. And we can spend a lot of time trying to figure it out when it's not even figure outable, you know? <laughs> exactly. So, uh, one thing that I learned a long time ago, and someone said this in a class one day, they said, whatever you want to know, the knowledge is in the room. Mm. You may not know it, but all these people sitting in front of you, you can pull pieces together and you'll have your complete answer. So a lot of times the information that we need, we have a friend, a coworker, mm. or we can get on social media and we can like somebody's twerking video. So we <laughs> can get on social media and ask somebody, hey, who knows how to do this, you know, or where can I get the information on this? Like use it to your advantage, not right. just for entertainment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. It's like, you guys take note of that one. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's like with being in the salon, the clients are a great resource. It's like, we kind of forget that we have so many people around us you yes. know, that may have solutions and answers and things that we don't exactly exactly never be afraid and don't worry about hearing no you're gonna hear no so many times it'll <laughs> bounce off your back and when okay. you're about, you know what i mean the time they get the oh out you're on to your next <laughs> you know what i mean you're just like they like keep it moving keep it moving exactly yeah um you have shared like so much with us it's like we're kind of winding down time wise is there anything that you want to to say that we haven't covered because it's like we, we covered some ground here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry, I feel like I talk a lot. That's um, good. That's what we're here for. <laughs> I would have a problem if you didn't. <laughs> oh, okay, good, 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 good. Um, I really think we've covered a lot. I just want to say, you know, kudos to you for taking the initiative and doing something like this, you know, for our industry and really bringing all of these people together that you see you hear about or you follow um so that that's amazing to to bring a voice and how you started off and you said you know having a seat versus creating your own seat i think you need a nice balance of both but i love to see you, you didn't create your seat you created the whole table so okay. I, I love it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it. yeah, I appreciate that. And I'm super excited about, you know, what we're doing, the interviews, the, the wealth of knowledge that's coming forth is just incredible. Um, I also think like when you're in school, because it was like, you know, some of us have been around a little while and, you know, it's like we've known some people who came before us, but a lot of the generation now doesn't know any of us or any of the people that came before them. Exactly. It's almost like we're reinventing the wheel or trying to, you know, um, you know, start from scratch when we don't have to, and there's so much wealth, but there isn't a place for us to find it in the beauty industry. And right. so, yeah, it's like, you can't go to the library and, you know, research and all of that kind of stuff. And so we've got to pass it down. So got to pass it down, right. And chronicle yeah. it now, you know, there wasn't social media when we were in our heydays, but right. now there is, you know, every now and then you just got to drop one of those gems in there and like, see, I do know what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, the things that you shared with us tonight are, are incredible and, and super valuable, you know, so I really hope people like hear it and listen, come back and listen to this again, because it's like you, you dropped some things on us. Um, <laughs> I'm, glad. I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, it's like you have the seat at the table. Is there anything, um, that you feel like others um, could, you know, be in that position, can, um, like you said, use your voice, but is there anything else that you can share with us about, um, you know, affecting change, you know, maybe at every level? Um, I really think it goes back to like what I said, when, even if you're not at the table, if you have voices 
that are willing to listen, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. put yourself out there. And especially in these times where I would like to think companies now just don't want to check the box. They really, because they know now just checking the box gets them on that cancel culture list. And, you know, they don't want to end up there, especially if they're marketing to us. Now, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. If they're marketing to us, they need to understand us. Mm -hmm. So be a voice for them. If you see a company that's not doing something, reach out to them on social media and, you know, don't go down the list of all the things that they're doing wrong, but say, hey, I see that you have a lot of opportunities. Can we schedule some time to talk and let me tell you some things that I can do to help you? Mm -hmm. And start the conversation that way because it could, it could lead into something more permanent and it could lead into you really having a seat at the table and being a valuable part of the conversation. Um, I know a few people that, you know, once all of this started, reached out to a couple companies and was like, hey, you're doing okay, but you could be doing better. These are three things that I see. Now they are on the board and on committees that are helping to bring about change within the industry. So, you know, use your voice, but use it in the right way. Yeah. Yeah. I think that those are really, really good tips. And you made me think of, um, you know, you're with L'Oreal and many of the L'Oreal companies under their umbrella are hair color companies. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, you know, it's like I've done some shows on, you know, we had hair color month last month and the amount of hair color that stylists are doing black stylist, black colorist oh my God. Yes. is incredible. And I, I feel like there's a, a gap between the color companies recognizing the amount of money that we're spending, the amount of, you know, time, energy, product that we're yes. using. Um, and just wonder if you have any, you know, thoughts on how to have more um, receptivity um, with all areas, you know, with, you know, we buy differently sometimes. Um, you know, we don't necessarily do a whole back bar. It's like, an, and even the shades that we use and need to use for working on primarily dark hair may be completely different from a salon that works on more blondes. And so, you know, um, at this point, you know, how we buy doesn't, I don't think get tallied up into what we're actually doing. Um, Cause what a lot of people don't understand when you piecemeal your back bar like that, it, it might be cost effective up front, but when you have a relationship with a brand, especially a hair color brand, usually they have people that specialize in helping you build your business or they have sales and promotions that they help and lift that salon up. So sometimes it might cost you a little bit more up front to use all one line, but the education and the brand support that you're getting with that is something that you would have to go out and spend extra money to get a consultant to come in and help you with these things where this all i have to do is buy product which i'm doing anyway and still get that same type of thing so i would just say really and that's n totally not a plug just saying really go out there do your homework find out what these companies can offer you before you make a decision on what lines you want to carry. Um, and really look at the technology. Hair color has come so far and some of the technology they have now will blow your mind as far as the care of the hair and the vibrancy of the colors. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another thing, go to your color classes and really understand how color works. Color is not just about doing a cute technique. It's about understanding the color wheel and understanding how to manipulate that color wheel to get the results you want. Once you learn that, that's gonna open up a whole new world to you. Um, and some of these salons, like I know here in New York, some of the salons that are departmentalized and you know, you're only doing color and 
their balayages or their single process colors start at like three and four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, but you have to really understand what you're doing. Um, so that would be another thing. Take some color courses. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But I do see us doing really fabulous hair color, which I'm really, really excited yes. about. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. There's tons of stylists that I see on Instagram and I always would just go in and like and leave comments because mm -hmm. it's beautiful, beautiful work. And I mean, there's nothing against weaves and extensions, but when you give me that same look and it looks like a wig, and it's natural hair. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, you know. There's yeah. some guys in Atlanta that are just killing it with the color game on, you know, on our hair, and it, it's amazing right. and great to see. Yeah, yeah. I interviewed um, Jessica Kidd with Black Colorist Matter, and and mm -hmm. the work she selects as far as the curating is just phenomenal. And yes. Yeah. It's all over hair color killer. She's doing amazing. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Uh huh. Amazing yeah. work. Yes, I love it. And Derek, oh my God, what is Derek's last name? I'm sorry, Derek, if you're watching, I don't remember your last name, but he's in Atlanta. Uh -huh. and he does like the blondes and balayage and hand painting. And it, right. all of his hair looks like it's extensions in a wig. And 90% of the time, it's real hair. Right. Yeah. Beautiful work. Yeah. Yeah. Glad we're going back to more real hair, too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 So I, I want to just say thank you because I think this has been amazing. It's like, like I said, it's like you really um, shared some things that we need to give some deep thought to um, and to, you know, look at implementing. Cool. But, um, yeah. Thank you for yeah. having me. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. And we're, we're grateful that you do have a seat at the table and that <laughs> you, um, you know, are of a mindset of, you know, reaching back to, you know, bring up the next generation and, and having a voice while you're sitting there. So we definitely appreciate it. And, um, you know, like I said, L'Oreal, of course, is a global beauty leader um, in the industry, um, you know, both professional and consumer. And so yeah. it's um, great to have um, what you shared with us as far as their commitment to, you know, more diversity and inclusion and you know, from all of the different levels, from the people who are creating the the imagery for the, um, you know, public relations and media, and yes. like you say, the boxes that we see on the shelves, it's like <laughs> the are all involved with that. Yeah. And, um, you know, all of the people along the way that can support, um, you know, having a, a voice. Exactly. Well, you know, thank you. Thank to you again images. for having me and for using your voice to bring everybody together for stuff like this. We need more of this and need more people out there like you. So. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. And we're wanting to spread the word and, and get um, get as much as we can out there so that people, you know, everyone that can really benefit from, you know, the things that we're hearing in these rooms. So I'm okay. super excited. Yeah. And we've made it through our first YouTube. And uh, <laughs> I want to thank everybody that's been here. It's like, let's see. I've got a couple things I wanted to share. Um, I think what I saw here. Um, oh, okay. This is uh, one that I liked um, from Ralph, a person uh -huh. with my own heart, uh, for being late or absent. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Ralph. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I feel. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and um, is it? Katanja. Katanda. Okay. Yeah. Says you always jump in to help. Best boss ever. So that's Aww, thank you. <laughs> it was a wonderful, cute wonderful thing. not working. She'll take a picture of me backstage when I'm helping out. And she'll like, oh, you're working and take a picture. So thank you for that, Katanda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and color classes are a necessity. So it's like we definitely agree with that. So thank you. And thank you all for being here. Thank you for everybody that may be watching this on a replay. And um, I want to again, thank you, Mize. And it's like, and to let you guys know, we've got more to come. Um, this month is all about being outside of the chair. Um, we talk about being outside of the box, but it's like, uh, some of us are looking for opportunities outside of the chair. And um, yeah. yeah, so um, we appreciate you sharing on <laughs> one aspect of it. 
<laughs> and next week I'm going to meet with Michelle O'Connor, who is a five time, if you guys can see my hand, five time nah. winner, the nah. North American Hairstyling Awards, which is like the Oscars of the industry. And um, she's absolutely amazing. And so she's going to be here to share with us, you know, um, it is uh, the, um, the art of becoming a champion. Is the name. I love it. Yeah. I so. love it. Yeah. That's impressive because Naha is a totally different beast. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And her, her editorial work is just off the chain. So it's like, yes. we're going to, and uh, hear from her and, and her experiences in the industry, which all of, you know, with all of that, she hasn't, has hit glass ceilings along the way. So we'll just leave it there and okay. have you come back and watch next time. <laughs> and then we've got Kia Sterling coming up after that. And she is just okay. absolutely brilliant. When you guys see these, the work that they're doing, it's just incredible. Yes. But she does primarily um, session work and she travels all over the world prior to COVID-19, mm -hmm. um, putting on all these different productions, including fashion weeks and that type of thing. So she's going to tell us more about that life and how she creates these amazing, um, I think luxury extensions is how they refer to them, but like the ones that are like down to your feet. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and true art. And so, um, and then we'll move into September is barber month. So we've got some amazing barbers. Um, popular Nobody will be here. John Mosley. Um, okay. Yeah, Eric Cheek will be here. Um, master educator extraordinaire and uh -huh. Um, we're going to have Kimberly Coleman, which I don't know if everyone knows her name, but she actually is a um, a female barber, which there aren't that many. Um, and she works in the Washington, D.C. area at Congress. And Ooh. so she cuts uh, the hair of some of the congressmen. And so she cuts white hair. She cuts black hair, you know, however I love you it. I love it. that. Yeah. And so she has some really unique experiences to share with us. So. And we've got a couple more, so it's like, well, we'll have a full month. And then, like I said, I've got like five years of people I want to talk to. So <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, once again, thank you for having me. Um, yeah. You know, I hope this was good. I hope somebody got something out of this. Yes. And just take one thing I said and go out there and make a change and it will pay off for you in the long run. I promise you. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, would you guys put down what you got out of this? Just one thing that that stood out to you about what Mazze said, because I, I think that's really helpful. It helps me cement in, you know, like what I get out of it when I recap. It's like, what's my takeaway from this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so share with us, if you would, um, you know, what stood out for you about what Mazze spoke about today. So we are going to wrap up. I appreciate you again and um, definitely... We'll look forward to, to seeing you at the top, hearing what's going on at the top. And <laughs> and um, don't forget to check out Access. If I was a little yes. bit talented, I would type that in the, um, <laughs> in the chat. Yeah, uh, so, uh, here. It'll connect and show up here. But I'll um, put it in the, the description as well. Yes. Um, like I said, www.lorealaccess.com. Or if you can look on my social media page, Mohair1. And the link is on there as well. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. All right. Thanks. So Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night. everyone. See you next time. Bye-bye.